Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of my Bucket List Day. So today we are going to talk about Thousand Trails Orlando. The pros, the cons, uh, all the tricks you need to know, as well as all the steps you need to take in order to uh, get the spot you're looking for. And there's a couple little tricks I'm going to share with you. Um, I will say that this park is always booked up, so uh, when you are going to book this, we're going to talk about that a little later. Try to book as uh, far in advance as you can, and we'll tell you a few tricks about that as well. But before we get into all of that, let's watch this intro, and we'll be right back. So welcome back. Yes, this is a long traffic light. So you're able to watch that intro and I'm still sitting here. Welcome to Florida, right? At any rate, first thing you're going to need to know uh, when you're going to come into the Thousand Trails is they are very strict about when you can come into the park. They say check-in is at noon and for those of you that have stayed here, you probably have already experienced this. They'll give you a call the night before and tell you, uh, or remind you, I should say, that uh, check-in is at noon, and you will not be able to enter the driveway until 12 o'clock sharp. So what they do is if you line up out on Highway 27, uh, by the way, you gotta take 27 north to get in there properly. If you're coming from 27 and heading south, uh, you're gonna have a difficult time getting in because everybody's lined up on the northbound side to get in and uh, coming in from the south is just going to be very very difficult so what you want to do is you come in from the south like I just did right now to demonstrate it and then you'll turn into one of these subdivisions anywhere from uh, not subdivisions shopping centers anywhere from Walmart all the way uh, up to where the sports or the gym is right here that I'm pulling into it's behind a Walgreens and uh, so it's behind the AutoZone and the Walgreens and the 24-hour fitness and you want to park in there and you'll see when you get in here when it's getting close to noon that there'll be a whole bunch of RVs here now I pulled in here to show you the big open space right here and you'll see a bunch of RVs that'll stage in here and at around 1155 or 1157 somewhere around there they're gonna pull in or pull out of here and then try to get in line and hopes to be the first one so I'm gonna pull over here a little bit and we're gonna talk about it a little bit So you'll see a bunch of RVs that are going to stage in this parking lot here. And uh, what they'll do is they'll just kind of wait here until about 11.56, maybe sometimes 11.57. So there are rumors. I've seen it happen. It's happened to me. Uh, but then there are times it doesn't happen. So it's very arbitrary on how this rule works. So if you go and try to line up in the turning lane, um, they will turn you away. They, there will be somebody sitting up there in a golf cart and then they'll just be waving you on, yelling at you, telling you you can't park there. In addition to that, they've lo loaded up a bunch of signs there that says no parking or waiting. And in addition to that, they have asked the police department, actually it's the highway patrol, that comes along and then uh, enforces that and makes you move on so you can't stage yourself there. Now again, I say this is arbitrary. Sometimes they're there, the police are there, and sometimes they're not. Depending on who's in the golf cart standing out there, 
they'll let you stay there or they won't wave you, or they'll wave you off. Um, I'm not going to mention names. There's a couple people that are very cool about it and have no problem if you sit there a couple minutes early. Um, there is two people, again, I'm not going to mention names and who they are, that if you are 30 seconds prior to 12 o'clock and you pull into that turning lane, they will basically motion you out, tell you you're too early, you can't come into the lane, even though you're 30 seconds or only 30 seconds early, even if you drive slow. If you try to just stage in the back end of it, these particular people, once you get up there to turn in, they'll wave you off or they're going to call ahead on the radio and make you go, once you get in there, make you turn around and get back out and then get back in line. So it, it just depends on who's in there. Um, they don't have any cons consistency to this, so uh, go at your own risk. I have unfortunately been there where I pulled in at around 43 seconds prior. I signaled to go in there and the person was out there with his cart, waving his hands, waving me off because I was too early. Um, it was 43 seconds before noon, so it was uh, 11.59 and 43 seconds. I thought I timed it perfectly, but according to this person, I was too early. So anyway, you have to live with that. These people, they have, some of them have a God complex because for whatever reason, they can control you and they, they just thrive on that. Um, whereas there are some other people out there that if you get in there five minutes early, they don't care. They just let you sit there. However, the police will come by and uh, shoo you off if they do come by and tell you you can't sit there. So what I do is I come to this particular area and I stage. And when I stage here, uh, there's another RV that just came in here and it's going to stage. So a lot of people will stage here, walk their dogs, have lunch, whatever. Uh, another tip when you're going to stage in these areas, if you're towing a car, highly recommend you disconnect your car. If you're flat towing a car, disconnect your car prior to you going in. Because when you get to the gate and you're towing a car, they're going to direct you to the staging area, but you're going to be pushed to one side. And you're going to, even though you get there number one, you'll be pushed to one side. They'll tell you to disconnect your car. And there'll be all the people that were behind you are going to go ahead of you and get whatever spot maybe you thought you might get. So let's talk a little bit about the timing of things, or the days, I should say. If you come in on Sunday, that seems to be their biggest day. Uh, the day I came in, as you saw here, as you've seen some highlights here, uh, there was 108 people coming in that day. Uh, I got very lucky. I was number nine, and uh, so I staged it and timed it pretty well. So as you can see here, I got in, got number nine, and uh, that was exciting. Now, where to go once you get in there? We're going to talk about that a little later, but let me show you a little bit how you stage so you're in the parking lot, as you see, I've been sitting here, 11.55 right now. So I would pull out. And then what I do here is, and you'll see when I, when somebody pulls out, it's almost like it's a follow the leader. Everybody doesn't want to be shooed off because I, many, many people have gone on here and got shooed off. So then I pull up here and I go really slow and I just kind of hug the curb here so traffic can get by me. And uh, then I just kind of roll here a little slowly and I can kind of look, you can't really see from here very well with the camera, to see if there's anybody looking through the trees, anybody staged up there. And if I see somebody staged up there and I wait here a minute and I see that they haven't been motioned off or told to move, I then make my move. So we're going to let this truck go by. And I'm like, okay, I can see the turnoff area. No one's been moved yet. So now I can just go ahead. And then I will make my way out on Highway 27. And here's, here's the gamble here. Now there could be a bunch of people coming from the south up 27, and they've timed it perfectly in another parking lot further down and uh, they're heading up. Now this traffic light right here, that's just a, a roll of the dice for whether you make it or not, so that's why I use this particular one. Anyway, 
get yourself out on 27. Now there's a turnoff here for this apartment building complex. You could kind of go in there and stage off a little bit, but you want to get up to this other one. Again, if you might have a rig or two sitting up there and they're not being waved off, so you're good to go. So you turn in here, and then you pull in and you just park behind the last rig and then you're in line. So as you see here, they also have the no standing anytime. Well, I don't want you loitering here or parked here. But if you just sit right here um, and wait till 12 o'clock, then they'll let you in. So I would recommend you don't get into this lane until it's about 11:58. Uh, if you get any sooner, you're you're kind of pushing your luck. So at 11:58, you get in here and you start to roll up. And uh, there's also a clock on the marquee, as you see right here, that gives you the time. And if the person on the cart will be standing right here, and he will signal to you when he's, you're allowed to go in. You get the signal to go in, and here we go. As you see, the line can get long. Now again, I was very lucky as I was number nine in line. And then I just creeped my way up here. All right, so I won't bore you with going up and down that, or waiting in line to get in there. Let me show you what you do once you get in. Okay, as you're approaching the gate right here, there'll be somebody standing out here with a tablet or a clipboard and asking your name. You need to show your ID. And once you show your ID, they wag, wave you on through and they'll instruct you that you have to take your very first left here by the green sign. So you take this left and you're going to go on to the staging area. So you'll come up to the staging area here. And there'll be a person standing here. And they'll also have a clipboard and a little pouch. So they'll check your name off on the clipboard. And then you'll turn in here. And they'll start, they'll give you their your number, which basically when you're checking out and you'll turn in here and stage and then they'll instruct you to pull around and wait there for the next person on the golf cart to come get you and then they will escort you to an open spot because they have gone around for the last hour prior to you getting here and uh, basically they are aware of all the open spots in the new and the old section So once she escorts you, then they take you to your spot, and you get yourself all set up. Now that's how you normally do that to get into a Thousand Trails Orlando. Let me tell you a little couple tricks. Let's say you want something in the new spot, and you're, oh, maybe you're number 27 or 30 in line. And there was only, they'll tell you that there's nothing open in the new spot. They've all been taken or the new sections I should say. So then there's old sections they'll tell you about. There's nice spots and there's some nice spots in the older sections but they're not the nice big concrete pads that the, all the new sections have. And uh, they also have nice new pedestals, water, things of that nature. Now in the older sections the, some of them do have new pedestals and they're pretty nice and they're some of them are paved, some of them are grass, some of them are dirt. But what you want to do then is you tell the person at the front gate 
when you're checking in that you know your way around you don't need to go into the staging area and that you you'll just go back into the pull throughs in section a so when you come to the pull throughs they're going to tell you to turn on your flashers that indicates to everybody on the golf carts that you're going to be going directly to the pull throughs so you won't go to the staging area you'll actually go straight and you just go straight and you come on back to the pull through area so once you turn into the pull through area I suggest you turn on Yellowfin and you drive on up Yellowfin and you start to look through or look for a pull through spot that's adequate now the reason you're doing this is this is just temporary now for those of you that are okay with this idea you just come on in here for the day or the one night and you find your spot and you pull in and you don't really completely set up you just pull in here kind of park you may put slides out and things like that and hook up your power if you have water in your holding tank just use the water in your holding tank you're only going to be here one day so you really don't do a full setup the reason I share this trick with you is the next morning when all the people are in the new section or throughout the whole park actually are getting ready to pull out or scheduled to check out that day you can then pack yourself up and get on your bike or if you've got a second vehicle have the person go over to the section you want to go to and scope out what spot is open you pack up your rig hook it up and uh, drive it on over to that new location because it's open and available and you get yourself set up the park will allow you to make one move during your stay so this is completely allowed now you can't put your car in there and save it and hold it or any furniture or of any kind or anything like that you have to you can't pull into it until it's empty obviously and you can't stage and sit out on the roadway um, they will circle around and they'll tell you you can't sit there and to go ahead and move and go back to your spot so again you got to orchestrate this with a partner if you have one with you and then you move into that open spot get yourself set up you have to get this done by 10 30. now you might say well wait a minute checkouts at 11. what if somebody waits till 11. well yeah that happens um so technically they could tell you you can't move at 10 30 because that's what's in the rules but for the most part everybody's out around 10 30 to 11 anyway I have moved at 10 45 and at 10 45 they didn't say anything about it so that's a little trick on how you can get into the spot you want if you get in here late or if the, when you get in here and the spot you want is taken so here's an example of what you'll do when you're want to move you'll just kind of Go to the section where you'd like to move to and uh, you have your partner whoever you're traveling with in the one vehicle or on their bike or anything as long as they have a radio or a phone with them and you'll see like those two spots right here available so you're like oh okay I want to go to this site uh, 23 now once you get into these sites it's your responsibility to call the front office and tell them that you moved and give them the street and site number that you moved to. That's very important. They get a little angry with you or testy with you if you don't do that. See here we have another spot that's open here. Again it's 11.15. It's too late for you to move but I'm certain they were open uh, in time so you could have moved into them. So I apologize, I pretty much brought you this whole video sitting in the seat of my truck, but I wanted to drive around and kind of show you everything you're going to expect to see when you pull on in here and you're checking in. 
Now I, as I mentioned, I got lucky when I got here and was number nine. And apparently they had 32 spots open in the new section when I pulled in. So I was able to get the spot I wanted. And what I liked about the spot I got is I like to have afternoon sun on my patio. And uh, I think most people agree with that. In the new section, there's only a certain couple streets that uh, you get that. And uh, on those streets, sometimes on only one side of the street, you get that afternoon sun. So you have to kind of be here to figure that out. I won't share with all of you what those streets are. Those I'll kind of keep my secret on uh, where I like to go. But I'll do a little flash here. Here's another friends of mine waving they're probably wondering what the heck is he doing driving around and here we see Mojo now there's one of those carts they're running around and they're looking for all the empty spots and taking notes and then here I am right here well I hope this is informative for you guys and you enjoyed this uh, those are some of the tips and tricks that I do to uh, get the spot that I want when I'm coming to Thousand Trails Orlando now the other section of Orlando, I'm not going to say, as I mentioned before, it's just, they're not bad, um, but there is one section that is considered the, uh, the kids' section, and let me show that here for you on the map. And what that is is they have all the RVs that kind of back up, and they have this huge grass area where all the kids just go out and play. So if you've got kids, uh, little kids all the way up to uh, tweens, um, I highly recommend you kind of go over to this area. They're going to have a lot of fun over there. Then, of course, you've got the pool and uh, pickleball and things like that, all those other things, and all those other things that's offered here. So one of the things I've got to say, my point of view of this whole thing is, I've got kind of a love-hate relationship with Thousand Trails. Um, Orlando, this TTO, um, I do enjoy this place very much. It's one of the nicest ones they have in the country, at least that I've experienced. Um, the other one that I think I shared with you all before that I love is in Mesa, Arizona. Very clean. Um, way better than this one even. It's just fantastic. But those are these are the only two in the entire country that I've experienced that are any good. The rest of them are, are all very old, very run down, very poor condition. Um, I have a big rig, so they're not set up for big rigs. Uh, they apparently have some type of a policy. They're not allowed to get on a ladder to trim trees. So they can only trim up to 12 feet tall. Um, so if you've got a rig that's taller than 12 feet, you are definitely hitting branches, hitting trees, things of that nature. So, in fact, even in this part of TTO, you go back to the very old section in the beginning, um, I can't get back there. The trees are hanging way too low. Um, so you can only put a, a smaller rig in there, or a rig you don't care if branches are scraping across your roof as you're pulling in. I've got a lot of glass up there from the solar panels, so panels solar panels, so as you know, I don't, uh, don't do well with trees. So if anybody else out there has been to a thousand trails that's a good one, um, I'd like to hear from you. My experience, I've been to about 60 of them throughout the country. I would say around 60, 58, 60, I can't remember. But other than these two, the Mesa, Arizona, and this one here in Orlando, all of them were just horrible condition. Um, no paved roads, or if they're paved, they're very, very bad uh, condition, potholes. Um, they're just, they're not good. Yeah, if you have the membership, you don't have to pay to get in there, um, but, they're not good. Now, some will argue the two that are in the Keys are very good. Um, I will say the ones in the Keys are, are nice. They're not poor. They're probably uh, just a notch down from our TTO here uh, and the Mesa, Arizona one. But the drawback to those is you're really tight. You're right on top of each other. 
um, but it is clean, it is well maintained, uh, so I'll, I'll give them kudos for that, but you're just on top of each other. Here in TTO, you're nice and spread out very, very well. You don't feel cramped. Same with the one in Arizona, you don't feel cramped at all. It's very, very nice, well thought out, well spread out, well engineered park. So, don't forget that that little like, subscribe, and ring that little bell to notify you when I put another video. And make it a great bucket list day. Bye.